Welcome to the latest Wax Ecstatic Pack Break. I'm your host, Matt Salmon. And on this week's podcast, which will be coming your way on Friday, November 6th, we're going to be looking at a couple of fun, relatively inexpensive, but easy to collect junk wax era sets. And back in the early 1990s, these were not considered junk sets. No, these were premium. We're, of course, talking about the Leaf set from 1992. Got a couple of Series 1 packs here. And the Leaf Studio set from 1991. And we got a couple of packs here. Thanks to my friend uh, Coach Mike, Mike McLaughlin, for uh, picking these up at a recent card show and, and sharing them with me. Created a great topic to talk about as Leaf the parent company of the Donruss baseball cards back in the late 80s and early 90s, becoming the premium brand of the Donruss sets. And as more and more companies started making the premium sets, their base sets throughout the early and mid 90s, Leaf would certainly lead the way with some very creative collections and some that were uh, definitely far better than what you got from Donruss. Now, before we open these packs, can you expect some multi-million dollar cards in here? Yeah, I know card collecting has increased in popularity over the last few months, and you're seeing some auctions for cards, you know, Mike Trout rookies and Shoei Otani's and uh, some vintage cards, you know, going through the roof. Hate to, to bring you down, but that's not going to be the case here. <laughs> These cards, even if you get a star card in a PSA 10 condition, are not going to pay off those student loans. Uh, I can tell you, even not uh, graded, you can get some cards here for maybe a dollar or two, depending on who the player is. But uh, don't get your hopes up. Now, normally I would do uh, the opening of cards chronologically, but I'm going to save the Leaf Studio for a second. Let's get into the Leaf premium edition from 1992 series one here uh, the set was released into series and the prime card that you wanted to get was the black gold rookies now you had the base cards you had the black gold cards but the black gold rookies were the keys especially pedro martinez although if you're a fan of other notable names you can also get uh the one patrick mahomes Senior, Yes, he was a black gold rookie in the Leafs set. But let's uh, open these up and see what we've got here. Some premium cards from 1992. This was the third year that the Leaf premium set had been out. And who do we have here? From the New York Yankees, Steve Farr. Uh, not Pat Mahomes, but a different Twins pitcher, Kevin Tappany, who was actually one of the more unheralded, underrated pitchers of the time. Chris Gardner of the Houston Astros. We've got, standing on his head, Sean Bosky. Let's take a look at this Carlos Hernandez card, because this offers us a great view of the front and the back. As you can see, a very simple design here, but very nice. Nice thick cardstock and uh, well packaged too. You didn't get a lot of damaged or dinged cards in these packs. But uh, normally you would have some kind of action shot on the front and you flip it over on the back. You would have full color photo taking up the left third, career stats, interesting little notes about the player's career, personal information up here, nice team logo up there. Also, let me see if I can get this in the light. There you go, see? To prevent counterfeiting, you had uh, kind of this little tr uh, translucent leaf logo imprinted in the backs of the cards. So kind of a neat little thing there. All right, uh, we do have a black gold rookie here, or a black gold card. Julio Franco. This is not quite Rudy Mioli, 75 tops pop-up, but clearly Mr. Franco, here seen at the tender age of 64, uh, not happy with the outcome of his at-bat in that game. All right, definitely not a rookie, but your black gold card, and there was one black gold card per pack, and each base card had a black gold card. Terry Pendleton 
one of the veteran stars of the Atlanta Braves teams in the early 1990s. If you flip the black gold card over, uh, this was the, the big difference here was uh, instead of the silver back, like you have Franco here, you have the gold back, but essentially the same type of card. The black gold cards were very, very sharp. I always liked those. Mike Greenwell, a little horizontal uh, fist bump action here, probably after a home run. Lucky uh, Bat Boy bombing the, the picture there. One of the great 80s and 90s names, Bob Tewksbury with the Cardinals. One of the most underrated relief pitchers of the time, Dwayne Ward, here with the Toronto Blue Jays. Gary Gaetti, formerly of the Minnesota Twins. Yeah, this was one of the many bad free agent uh, signings and acquisitions made by... Uh, Whitey Herzog, when he was the Angels' general manager, briefly. Now, uh, even though Leaf had a premium card here, they did have similar issues with the distribution of cards. As you can see, we have two angry Julio Francos. That's uh, not going to help the bottom line there. We've got the veteran Juan Samuel, Brian Harper, catching for the Twins, and another catcher, Joe Girardi, of course, a uh, much heralded manager many years later. All right, let's get to the second leaf pack here, these tamper-resistant packagings from back in the day, a little harder to open up. All right, Sean Dunstan, who's our black gold card here? Greg Jeffries, <laughs> yes. Oh, everybody had the future star, 89 tops, Greg Jeffries. Well, I've topped you. Checkmate. I've got the black gold card of Mr. Jeffries here with the uh, Kansas City Royals. And uh, clearly, uh, this was before he even played a regular season game for the Royals. You can clearly see he's uh, in his spring training uniform there. So that was the other advantage of some of these premium sets was uh, because of their release dates, you could get pictures of players with their new teams. Scott Sanderson there with the Yankees. We've got Dave Valley of the Mariners. Von Hayes, another great Whitey Herzog acquisition with the uh, uh, Angels at that time. Billy Ripken, look at that. Look at like Cal Ripken there, I love that shot. Got the Hall of Famer, John Smoltz. Of course, that's how Joe Buck introduces him all the time. Dwayne Ward once again, Gary Gaetti once again. Charlie Liebrandt. Boy, Game 7, 91 World Series, remember that? Oh, my Lord, we've got the Julio Franco hat-tossing hat trick. Scott Leas, one of the unheralded heroes of the Twins World Series in 1991. Sweet music, Frank Viola. Look at that great action shot there of Mike Lavalle. Spanky Lavalle in action. Definitely not known for his bat. But his defense. And then you've got Mark Davis. You do have a little damage to a card up here, but as I said earlier, that was not common. All right, so those were the 92 Leafs. Now let's take a look at a truly unique product from 1991. A great creative venture that Leaf went on in the emerging days of premium sets. We've got the studio set. I always love the studio cards. And again, the tamper-resistant packaging requires me to use my teeth. So here's your uh, Rod Carew puzzle pieces. So let's see now. Oh, unfortunately, a little bit of damage to this card. But here you go. Robin Yount. Full mulleted. Love it. I'm going to flip this card over. Because I think this was the downside to the studio cards. Very drab and boring card back. So artistically, what it had on the front, the uh, black and white studio look, kind of got taken back by this rather drab back. But if you read these things, you would have some interesting things, not just personal information and career information, but hobbies and interests. So if you ever wondered, Robin Yount liked fishing, cars, and motorcycles, likes listening to rock music, is a big auto racing fan, his hero, A.J. Foyt. Bet you didn't know that. So while I go through these, I'm going to tell you who the heroes of these players are. Bobby Witt, only he knows how funny that joke was. Uh, let's see, he's a fan of all Boston teams' favorite TV shows, The Three Stooges. 
Kevin Moss. Oh, how many collectors had broken hearts over these Kevin Moss cards. You pull these in 91, you put them in lockdown cases. They're worth about three cents today. Kevin Moss's heroes, George Brett and Lou Gehrig. Likes country music, watches 30-something and Three's Company. Okay. Tony Pena, Boston Red Sox. Love the Olin Mills look to that picture. Hero Roberto Clemente, no surprise there. Watches the Cosby Show, shops for clothes. Mark Gubaza in full mullet. Look at that. That thing's just crawling right up his neck there. Hero Steve Carlton and Mike Schmidt. A fan of the Flyers, Sixers, Eagles, and Notre Dame sports. Watches Cheers and the Simpsons. Well, who didn't back in 1991? Edgar Martinez, boy, look at that. Uh, he's just got kind of that lost look in his eyes. That's kind of odd. We'll get to Sosa in a minute. Hobbies and interests, golf, reggae music, comedy movies, Lakers fan. This was a, a pretty big card to have back in the day. Not necessarily 1991, certainly by 1998. Sammy Sosa and this shrubbery of a hairdo. Heroes were Juan Samuel and Julio Franco. Well... Mr. Sosa, have I got a deal for you? Compliments of me. Shane Mack, looking pensive. Andre Dawson, his hero. Watches Cosby and Married with Children. Again, who didn't in 1991? Speaking of looking pensive, Tony La Russa, winning manager, 1989 World Series. That's an odd choice, considering this was from 1991. I think they stiffed Lou Pinella. And uh, Tony La Russa, your new manager of the White Sox. I think that bodes well for Ron Kittle. And Mike Sosha, future manager here. Heroes Johnny Bench, Thurman Munson, watches All in the Family, follows Penn State, plays the guitar, listens to Motown music. All right, last but not least, up against the clock here. So let's quickly get through these. Here's your puzzle pieces. David Segui. Another one of those players who had a pretty good career. Uh, didn't quite live up to some expectations. His hero was Frank Howard, Hondo. Watches baseball on TV, likes classic rock. Collects guns. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> sweet Lou Whitaker, looking pretty sweet and innocent there. Hero Joe Morgan, an Orlando Magic fan. Well, that's interesting. No idea about that. Likes to watch Jack Lemmon and Walter Matthau movies. Really? Bob Welch, just tossing the ball in the air. Looks like he's juggling, but he's not. Heroes Al Kaline, Mickey Lolick. He likes his kids, likes old-time rock and roll music, collects art, a fan of Eastern Michigan University. Joe Girardi in action. <laughs> Got another Greg Jeffries. His hero is Jesus Christ. Enjoys all types of music, likes Sanford and Son. <laughs> fan of the... Bears and Bulls. So here's Greg Jeffries again with the uh, 90210 hairdo. Like that. Heroes, his dad, and Ty Cobb. Likes to play pool, enjoys listening to R&B, watches Cheers, collects Crystal. Okay. Willie McGee, recently celebrated a birthday. His dad was his hero. Hobbies and interests, favorite TV show is In Living Color. Loved that show. Pete Harnish here with the Houston Astros. Rod Carew, Dr. J, all-time hero, Bjorn Borg. Favorite TV shows, MASH, Cheers, and The Simpsons. Phil Plantier, another big rookie of the time. Follows the Lakers in Georgetown, also liked in Living Color. Brian McRae of the Royals. Hero was Michael Jordan, fan of the Miami Hurricanes and North Carolina. Favorite shows, The Simpsons and Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. And last but not least, Tampa's own Tino Martinez. Favorite uh, person or his hero, his dad. Watches Cheers. He's a Lakers and Tampa Bay Bucks fan. Trust me, in 1990, it was not easy to be a Tampa Bay Bucks fan. Well, we're almost out of time on this video, but we've got plenty to talk about with these cards in our next podcast which will be coming up this friday 
November the 6th. Join us, won't you? It drops at noon Eastern. I'm Matt Salmon. Thanks for watching this Wax Ecstatic Pack Break.